Hello everybody, welcome back for another video, hope you're all having a great day and that you are all doing well. To start things off, you're going to notice a, a trend in this video. Customers of major crypto exchange known as Binance can now purchase crypto directly using debit and credit cards via payment processing firm Coinal. Binance users can now buy crypto using their Visa and MasterCard. Debit and credit cards, the company announced in a blog post on the 25th of September using Coinal. Binance clients are able to buy five cryptocurrencies, and they are Bitcoin, Ether, Litecoin, XRP, and Bcash ABC. The London-based payment processing charges 2.5% per transaction, with the purchased assets on average taking 5 to 25 or 20 minutes. That was a 5 there. To reach a Binance wallet... Since Coinal payment processing is subject to local banking policies, the solution is not available in a wide list of countries and regions. Binance said, To date, Coinal does not support bank cards issued within mainland China, Russia, the United States, Vietnam, Bolivia, Colombia, Ecuador, Algeria, Bangladesh, Indonesia, Jordan, Kyrgyzstan, Morocco, Nepal, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Pakistan, Taiwan, and Cambodia. I guess the major point is if you live in any country outside of those countries, uh, you can now purchase cryptocurrencies with a card. Uh, this has been a long time coming. I think we had news about this at the beginning of 2018 where Binance was announcing that they would be rolling out a number of things and one of the main things that we actually did get in 2018 was the actual ability to be able to purchase cryptocurrencies with fiat and i think that was when they opened up was it binance jersey i i, I think that was it which also uh we don't typically hear about too much anymore but i mean who, who you know we shouldn't have everyday news about people being able to buy cryptocurrencies with fiat after it's been activated anyway uh yeah you're definitely like, like i said there's going to be a a bit of a pattern uh, if you've been around the last two weeks and have been paying attention to the videos, uh, it feels like to me <clears throat> personally that the market and or companies are gearing up for something because they're all releasing very similar news around similar times uh, and it's similarly targeting uh, the same kind of clients. Anyway, here's the actual blog post right here. Finance ad support for Coinal. Buy crypto with debit and credit cards. And without further ado, let's us move on. Next up, cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase has announced that new, here we go, good news, that New York residents now have access to two cryptocurrencies launched for other jurisdictions months ago. In two tweets late on Wednesday, the exchange said customers based in New York State can now hold Buy, sell, send, and receive both Stellar Lumens <clears throat> and Chainlink. The cryptos will now be available on Coinbase.com and the exchange's iOS and Android apps in <clears throat> New York State. Come on. <clears throat> I was totally fine before. Now I'm coughing all over the place. Anyway, Lumens had previously been launched in most jurisdictions on Coinbase back in March. Wow, that's a long time ago. While Link followed in June... The high regulatory hurdles set in New York were likely behind the delays in adding support. Yeah, for, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I know <laughs> very few people listening or watching might actually be in New York. <clears throat> Nonetheless, New York State. Uh, but typically, uh, New York and the United States get the short end of the stick quite often when it comes to uh, things being listed. So I just thought, I know, I know there are a, a, love, a, love, a lot of people out there who uh, do like lumens, and they probably are in New York State, so go get it, because it wasn't available before. March is a really long time. Like, remember we were talking about how uh, those people are trying to uh, have like a lawsuit or something against the people who made the bit license? This is why, because it's, it's March, April, May, June, July, August, September, we're almost October, that's eight months that it took to get paperwork done to list lumens on Coinbase. Anyway, let's move on. Next up, BitTrue or BitRu, Singapore-based exchange BitTrue is launching a low-interest crypto lending platform, the company said. The service 
which goes live on the 30th of September, loans Bitcoin, Ether, XRP, and Tether at 4 cent percent daily interest rate. Users pledge existing BitTrue held crypto assets as collateral against their 100 minimum dollar loans. BitTrue will fund its novel Power Piggy crypto holding rewards program with users loan interest payments. The loan platform rollout is part of a larger shift for the XRP focused exchange. CEO Chris Wang said in a statement alluding to more financial instruments in the pipeline. He said, and I do quote it. BitTrue's goal from the beginning was always to bridge the emerging crypto markets with the traditional financial services sector. It's a perfect time for us to launch the first of our initiatives in quote. Uh, this is now the, <clears throat> the 800th big number uh, cryptocurrency exchange who now has a uh, lending loaning platform. I keep seeing news like this and I keep thinking that I've already gone over it and lo and behold, nope, it's another completely new... <clears throat> Whatever, I haven't had my tea yet. New cryptocurrency exchange uh, that is launching something like this, which leads me to believe that there's probably some major, I want to say, industry leader somewhere around there. <clears throat> Come on. Who's probably thinking of uh, launching something similar to this in the next couple of weeks. And therefore, everyone else is trying to get their uh products out there before you know the the, the big dog does I, I have no idea who it could possibly be but it's a little too weird that you would have seven to eight different companies over the course of 12 days who were all launching the exact same thing back to back to back which leads me to believe once again uh they may have news that something else is being launched and therefore uh they're trying to get the leg up next up cryptocurrency exchange coin direct <clears throat> is launching an over-the-counter brokerage in South Africa. Oh, quick side note. <clears throat> and I say that as I clear my throat. Uh, I've had another video before <clears throat> where I was actually clearing my throat. And for some reason, like two people got really upset at me in the comment section that I didn't like edit my video to edit out my clearing my throat as I'm talking. I'd, I don't have time for such affairs. I don't, I don't, I'm sorry that I'm, um, human and that I need to clear my throat not to be mean to anyone but it's more like a I I've noticed I do little things in my videos and people get really upset they're like can you stop breathing so hard in your microphone I'm like I'll I'll try not to take a breath next time I will um I'll take one big breath at the beginning of the video and that's all I get just thought I'd throw that out there because I, I I could I could feel people typing in the comment section uh so just gonna say that Cur cryptocurrency exchange coin direct launches an over-the-counter brokerage in south africa as industry news outlet coin insider reported on the 27th of september the platform creates a vast liquidity pool by integrating with global platforms allowing for bitcoin price locks after a confirmation and for instant processing with no fees and or slippage the service lets high volume rich people users to avoid lengthy transactions that can reportedly take over 12, 12 hours. The exchange's COO, Nick Haralambus, added, and I do quote, <clears throat> During the first two years in the industry, we have paid close attention to which users are driving the volume of crypto trading. Our approach is to bring cryptocurrency to as many users as possible. However, the data shows that a majority of the daily trading volume in South Africa right now comes from a very small percentage of traders end quote uh the interesting point being i'm pretty sure i mean i don't live there but i've heard the name coin direct before mentioned recently or often about south africa i assume this is one of their major rural cryptocurrency exchanges within the country second point being uh just talking about the other exchanges who are constantly launching or have been launching the last couple of days uh the crypto lending and loaning and interest rate return platforms uh a lot of them have also been rushing seemingly to me in my eyes opening their own over-the-counter uh trading desks in some sort of way obviously this is meant to uh target the richest of the rich investors as usually over-the-counter uh purchases are high six figures and the most people are probably just buying a couple of hundred dollars if not a couple of thousand over the course of months so anyway um something is happening i don't think i don't remember from what i 
remember, yeah, that's it, uh, that the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ was planning on doing anything like this. Like, I, it, it has to be coinciding with some sort of event that's going to take place. As far as we know, back is just for the physical futures right now. And also, I think they're planning on launching a cryptocurrency exchange. But no word, I mean, I, they're probably going to have an OTC anyway. Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> um, in a weird-ish turn of events, the Bitcoin hash rate recovered after a one-day crash of nearly 30%, assuaging, assuaging fears that the network is in trouble. Bitcoin mining now happens at 94 exahashes near the absolute peak of just above 100 exahashes. The drop in mining was considered a warning about the risks of proof of work, but even with the low hash rate, it would be too expensive to attack the network. Bitcoin still uses as much electricity as Austria due to the exponential growth of mining in the past six months. I'm actually glad they even put that sentence there. I was listening to, once again, for those of you who are playing that game in the comment section, I was listening to a podcast and they made sure to mention in the podcast, they were like, yeah, the, the main argument now that governments can find against Bitcoin is that it uses so much electricity. I, I, I think the, the previous metric was that it used as much electricity as I think like a, a, a part of Ireland or something like that. And then it was this other country and then this other city. And now it's as much as Austria. Uh, what they usually typically failed to mention is that the actual Bitcoin mining, a, a, a good if not more than 50% of it is done by green energy. That is to say solar panels, wind power, or hydroelectricity. And we went over this even a couple days ago is because this is usually the places where they can get the cheapest electricity. A lot of places within the Middle East, we also had news about that in 2018 as well, have started to create uh, cryptocurrency mining farms. We don't know where they are. However, um, a large part of the Middle East is trying to develop a huge... Uh, solar powered working system for the entire country. So a lot of this energy, regardless of how much it might be using, uh, is renewable, if not um, coming from natural resources. And therefore, it's not like Bitcoin is just simply draining the earth of everything uh, that it has. Here's an actual chart over here. I believe this chart. Here it is. Uh, here's the, the, the drop that we saw. And it's already back above it. Uh, no one seems to have any actual idea, answers for why this drop happened. It could have simply been like we were talking about a couple days ago when Bitcoin's price dropped. Uh, that simply maybe people, Bitmain, who knows, uh, weren't plugging a large amount of their machines in an effort to get the difficulty for the Bitcoin mining difficulty. Uh, to drop and therefore I guess if the difficulty has adjusted itself <clears throat> they turned back on their computers it's kind of weird uh, once again uh, this all feels rather coordinated uh, but I will keep the rest of that to myself because it, it's kind of weird that all this stuff happens the price drops the hash rate drops uh, whales are moving tons of money people were doing the huge sell-offs and then Day and a half later, uh, things are relatively back to normal, not price wise, uh, but even even as far as like price discovery within uh, Bitcoin futures from the CBOE and also the physical Bitcoin futures. Uh, we're now in an instance where in once again, Bitcoin's price is not only less expensive, but it also allows institutional investors to be able to get in at a at a lower price. Yeah, um, at the moment, for those of you who don't know. Over the last 24 hours or so, Bitcoin's price dropped to around the 8,000 US dollar level. It briefly dipped under 8,000, I believe touching 7,958, somewhere around there. It quickly bounced back above 8,000, which seems to be the new um, bottom, if you will, uh, for where the price is uh, not going to go much lower. A number of analysts around the world are saying that they predict that soon Bitcoin will probably, so saith the analysts, go back above 9,000, if not 9,500, and an attempt to push back above 10,000. A lot of people are expecting a surge relatively soon. Uh, don't get your hopes up. However, uh, there will be a surge at some point, whether it be today or tomorrow, next month. 
if not the 23rd of December. We always experience these surges. No one usually... You, blah. I was going to say we usually don't know why. About five days later, it's like, oh, that trade happened. And it's like, someone bought up $100 million worth of Bitcoin. So we'll figure it out eventually. Uh, the point is the um, price drops that we experienced during this week uh, seemed a bit too um, coordinated for their own good. However, um, I know there are a lot of people out there who I was actually very... Uh, it's it's really funny. Certain days, I'll be honest with you. Certain days when there's like really bad news in the market, I sit there and I'm like, I like hold my breath. I'm like, okay, here we go, because I don't want people to not be upset, but like kind of like, uh, oh man, it's happening again. But I was pleasantly surprised. The comment section was filled with like, okay, time to buy some more. And I was like, okay, I, I think people are getting it. If you've been around for about a year, I have a friend, bless his heart. Uh, he just recently got into the into the the <laughs> into the game, got into the cryptocurrency space. I don't know if he's listening. Hello, if you are uh, he's traveling to Dubai, I think. Um, and he saw Bitcoin's price drop down like a day or two ago. It was like uh, it, it was just screenshots after screenshot. He was like, do you know uh, do you know what's uh, do you know what's going on? And I was like, OK, you you're 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 brand new to all of this. If you if you've been around in, in Bitcoin for at least a year. These drops should no longer scare you because, you know, at some point the market's going to go back up. People are going to lose their minds as prices are going up. Everyone's very euphoric. And then about 18 days later, the price comes back down and everyone's like, OK, so where do we go from here? Anyway, uh, I'm not expecting a surge anytime soon. Simply because I uh, try not to get my hopes up. Anyway, to finish the video off in... Uh, Odd yet interesting news. An employee at a, re at a nuclear research center in a town in Russia was fined $7,000 for uh, mining Bitcoin. This has happened many times before. This is not the first time that we've had news like this. I don't know how many of you remember last year. There was uh, a guy, there was a teacher, I think in China, who was mining Ethereum in the classroom next to him. I think it was in like an empty classroom. His students kept on complaining that there was a very loud buzzing sound coming from the next class. And they thought the, that the next class over was like humming. I, I forgot exactly what the story was, uh, that he was mining Bitcoin. Uh, he's mining Ether. There was another news story sometime last year as well, that there was a Google employee uh, who, thought, <laughs> who thought that not only did Google not have uh cameras around their uh faculty but that he could simply plug his computers into one of their mega computers and try and mine as much bitcoin as possible without anyone figuring it out so this keeps happening over and over uh, i mean it's sad that this that, 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 that this person was fined but it's interesting that people are looking for new inventive ways to be able to get bitcoin he used a nuclear supercomputer do you understand like like the I don't even want to use the word desperation, like how, how much you really want Bitcoin to be like, this is fine. <laughs> no one's going to, no one's going to check. No one's going to, no one's going to look behind this computer to see if my, if my little laptop is there. <clears throat> and then the other, uh, also equally funny air quote news scammers asked British citizens for nearly $2.5 million in Bitcoin claiming that the funds would be spent to maintain the local economy after the Brexit. Fraudsters apparently sent out physical letters to the British public, okay, posing as a private secretary of Queen Elizabeth II, according to one of the alleged copies revealed by an executive of a tech firm. Paul Ridden, CEO at UK-based IT firm Smart Task, posted a picture of the letter on the 24th of September, Chuckling, apparently it said, uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? There we go. <clears throat> and I do quote, the letter says that the Queen's part has already accumulated 82% of the 19 billion British pounds that must be paid to the European Union to save the economy. Apparently the letter was asking people uh, for money in Bitcoin to accumulate the rest of the money that the Queen needed to save the economy after the Brexit. If that doesn't win inventive points, I do not know what I, I saw this and I was like, there's no way. Uh, part of the problem is that usually when we have scams like this, there's always one person who actually sends money. Anyway, 
I hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening. Wherever you are, wherever you might be, do hope it's absolutely fantastic. As always, a super large thank you to my Patreon supporters. Yes to Crypto, Miller Hitch Test Every Day, and Kyle Skips Leg Day, Minting Coins, Jeremy Fox, Jim Gardner, Anthony Charles, Nick Mangialavori, Paxis, Crypto Beer Shipmate, Vlad the Impaler, Richie Rich the Third, Nick Kanaya, Setsuna, Damien, Nicholas Renearth, One Piece, One Love, Cryptopolis, Crypto Artist, Coldy 3D, Strange Radio Central, Mechanic, Miluizi, Adobo, Bankroll Network, Crypto Joe, 242 to the World, Wise Night Owl, Jared Schneider, Triple Lemon J, Woody and Daisy, Brady Neils, Master Ventures in Thailand, Moher Maroney, Adam Graysick, and Professor Wally from Gun Abat University. Thank you all very, very much for your support at the moment. The market looks crazy. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. Uh, Bitcoin is up. Yay. It's at $8,233. It, I'm trying not to get my hopes up. A lot of the coins have really... Where's... Oh, well. Uh, that's kind of odd. I so it's going bound to happen. Uh, Tether is now the number four coin. I'm used to Litecoin being there. And even Bcash has also passed by Litecoin. Times they are changing. Tether should, that's, that's really crazy that Tether is the number four coin. It shows the popularity of stable coins. That was a joke. Um, no other coin is really doing anything hyper significant. Everyone is kind of staying in the same range. Zcash is up by 10%. Yay. Uh, nothing else seems to be doing anything too crazy. I guess we'll see by the end of this weekend uh, the, the trend that we might be in uh, during next week. Hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all have a great weekend, a great weekday, depending on when you're listening to this and or watching this. Go out and enjoy yourself. Go do something nice. Uh, the summer may be over, but autumn feels absolutely wonderful. It's not too cold yet. Thank you all, every single one of you, once again, for watching and or listening. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.